now that we're more comfortable with electric fields, here's a common type of question people put up just to kind of flip things around. So instead of giving you the charges, we tell you something about the electric field and have you work backwards. There's no new idea here per se, just a new way to manipulate the math and the numbers. So I just want to see it through once so you're not spooked out when you actually see a question like that. Here is the situation. You have two charges, Q1 and Q2. So let's draw Q1 over here and Q2 over there. And then they say it's a certain distance apart and one fourth of the way from Q1 to Q2. So at about here, which is one quarter R, we have a point P. And at this point P, the electric field at point P is perfectly equal to zero. That's what they say. So we have to find some relation between Q1 and Q2. So solve one in terms of the other based on this information they give us. The only way for the electric field to be zero here is that the two Qs must have the same sign of charge. So say they're both positive. So we have a positive charge here and a positive charge here. So then we would have E1 going away from it and E2 going the other way. If they're both negative, then we'll have E1 going this way and E2 going that way. So first of all, from this, we know that they would have the same sign. If they have different sign, just to give you a counter example, so this is positive and that's negative, at point P, you would get E1 pointing that way and E2 pointing that way, and that will never equal to zero. So that, that would not work. So now that we have our direction established, let's go for our magnitude. Well, to get the magnitude, we would need all the R. So this is 3 quarters R, because that's 1 quarter. And so E1 as a magnitude is equal to KQ1, magnitude again, 1 quarter R all square. And then E2 is KQ2, 3 quarters R square. You then sum up your electric field, and we know that's equal to zero in this case, because that's been given. It's equal to E1. Oh, let's set up a proper X and Y axis. Yes, so E1, we'll say it's positive. We'll assume this case, because it's going to give us the same answer anyway. E1 is positive, then minus the magnitude of E2. So we know that E1 must equal to E2, size-wise. So we have KQ1 over 1 quarter R square is equal to KQ2, 3 quarter oops, R all square. K cancels out, and hopefully a bunch of other things cancels out too, but this is caught under in the square, so let's make that expanded. These are Qs, by the way, not 9s. Just give you a little squiggly line here. 3 squares, 9, 4 squares, 16, and R squares, R square. R square can go away. This is the same r. Oh, 16 can go away. Oh, well, that's easy then. Multiplying the 9 over, we have 9 q1 is equal to q2. So then we know that the q2 is 9 times as big as q1. If you didn't go through the math, you might be tempted to say that q2 would be 3 times higher or 4 times higher based on the quarter or the fact that this is 3 times further away. But that's not right because your E field is directly proportional not to R but R squared. So in order to have the same effect, but distance is 3 times away, you need to be 9 times as strong in terms of your charge, 3 squared. They can make these kind of questions more complicated by introducing more charges or also having you just to find out where R is without giving you where the R are supposed to be. But the math setup is pretty similar, it's just a matter of solving for different things.